Thanks. Something for the journey, Master Dick. Thanks. Hi, Rosie. Look after yourself. When you're here, I have to look after myself. Master Dick. Bye, Rosie. Bye, Dickie. Bye, Barbara. Bye, Dickie. You take your leave of your father, Master Dick. I'll have you in the camp. <coughs> ah, off at last, eh? Well, have a good term, my boy, and try not to get into any more scrapes. I have written to Dr. Grimstone expressing the hope that in the event of any further misbehaviour on your part, you will not spare the rod. Uh, no time for a chat, I'm afraid. I mustn't keep the cab waiting. Not here yet. Not here? Well, I'd better have a word with Bola. It's all right. He's gone to fetch me. Oh. Pocket money, but your grandmama gave you a sovereign as a Christmas box. I spent it. Spent a whole sovereign since Christmas? On what bread? Here, at the Baker Street Bazaar. If I gave you more, you'd spend that too, I suppose. Not all at once. But you'll need something to put in a plate on Sunday. Oh. Oh, very well. <clears throat> Five shillings, an uncommonly liberal allowance for a young fellow of your age. Thank you, Father. Now, where's Bowler got to? You'll miss your train. and Uncle Marmaduke brought back from India. I found it on the train in the living room. Can I keep it? Let me see. What do you want it for? I could use it for a swap. Exchange it for sweetmeat, you mean? Certainly not. Now, Uncle Marmaduke may be an unmitigated scoundrel, but he gave this stone to your dear mamma. She considered it to be one of her most precious possessions. He said it was a talisman. Is it? I'm sure I couldn't tell you. I don't think it can be. Talismans are meant to do magic, aren't they? Cure diseases and change people into toads and so on. I believe so. All a lot of nonsense, of course. Must be. Rub it on my chill brain and see if it work. Look, I, I think I hear a cab. No, oh. a four wheel. Well, where the devil is the man? We can't have you late for school. I hate school. Hate Crichton House? Yes, it's absolutely beastly. Don't be absurd, Dick. Here I am, forking out for all the extras. <laughs> Dancing by gad and meat for breakfast, and this is a thanks I get. Couldn't I go to Eton or Harrow or somewhere? Out of the question. Well, couldn't I stay at home and have a private tutor? You clutter the place up far too much as it is. No, you'll stay in Dr. Grimson's care until you're old enough to join me in trade. I don't wish to hear another word on it. Oh, don't <laughs> cry, my boy. I know it's common amongst young fellows of your age to feel that they are ill-used and put upon, but believe me, when in later years you look back on the innocent delights of boyhood, you will consider them to have been the happiest days of your life. This is to be the happiest days of my life. I haven't got much to look forward to. You just can't see things in perspective, that's all. You think that when you leave school, all your troubles will be over, but take my word, compared to the cares and burdens of middle age, the petty problems of youth are as grains of sand. Oh, I only wish that I could be a boy again, like you. Don't believe it. Don't 
don't believe you'd like to throw Dr. Grimstone laying into you with one of his canes. I think it'd jolly work. <laughs> I wonder where else that I've said anything amusing. Dickie, <laughs> you can't control yourself. I must ask you to leave the room. You can wait in the hall. You mean you don't feel any different? Different? Well, now you mention it, I do feel a little odd. However, that is no excuse for you to behave like an ill-mannered lout. Leave the room, sir, before I lose my temper. Why didn't you look at yourself in the glass, Robert? You have to admit, there's no end of a lot. Lot? This is one of your infernal tricks, sir. What have you done to this mirror? Nothing. The drop of stone seems to have done to you. The stone? Uncle Marmaduke must have been right after all. It is a chalice, Mr. Dick. You didn't expect me to believe all that mumbo-jumbo. I expect you to believe the evidence of your eyes, father. I don't understand. When did it happen? The moment you said you wished you were a boy again. You were holding the stone, remember? Some sort of wishing stone, eh? Well then, proof and simple. All I have to do is wish myself back again. I wished to be the man I was five minutes ago. It didn't work. Why didn't it work? Perhaps you'd only grasped one wish, and you've had yours. But you haven't. If you must do it, my boy, take the stone and wish me back again. Have you wished? No, not yet. Why not, for heaven's sake? Bowler will be in directly, which looks like a fool. Why? I shall introduce you as my long-lost twin. It'll be spiffing, son. There's nothing spiffing about it, Dick. If news of this mishap reached the city, it wouldn't do my reputation any good at all. Then we must make sure that the news doesn't get out. Mustn't we, Father? Exactly, my boy. Now come, with myself again. There's a good fellow. I suppose, if I were to do as you asked, life would go on just as before. Eh? I mean, you'd pack me off to Christ's house if nothing had happened. Of course. Very case, someone may come in at any minute. Well, that settles it. I wish I was a man like you were just now. Treacherous young puppy! Give me the stone! No, father! It's too late! It's worked! Well, I hope you're satisfied. You think you'll enjoy going back to Crichton House looking like that? I, I have no intention of going back to Crichton House. Oh. Well, you said that you wanted to take my place, father. <laughs> Now's your chance! Don't be absurd! I didn't really mean it! Well, the stone didn't know that, did it? You'll have to choose your words more carefully in the future. Oh, son of a bowler. Go and get your hat and coat on. There's a good chap. I will not. How dare you order me about? I refuse to move from this chair. Master Dick's chap, sir. Good. You may have to use force, bowler. The young lad seems to be unwilling to do as he's told this morning. Well, we'll soon see about that now. Come along, Master Dick. You don't want to cause your father unnecessary grief, do you? Uh, leave me alone. I forbid you to lay hands on me. I am not what I see. No, of course not. Off we go now. Uh, you better escort him to the train, Bowler. Deliver him to Dr. Grimstone personally. Very good, sir. Ooh. This goes so far enough. Tell him the truth. The truth? The truth, my boy, is that one's school days are the happiest of one's life. Especially when one's father has to fork out for all the extras, like dancing and meat for breakfast. You ungrateful young whippersnapper. Just you wait till I regain my rightful form. Oh, one word of advice. Look, if Grimston decides to flog you, try and persuade him to use one of his older canes. That new one hurts. That's a very devil. Well, goodbye, my boy. Have a good term, Bella. No. Oh, no. Please, <laughs> you're making a terrible mistake. Put me down, you stupid old... Oh, I wish that you could have been here, dear Mama. You'd have thought this such a jolly wheeze. A uh, fooler. Yes, Master Dick? I have 
five shillings by pocket. George, let me out of the cap round the court. A bribe, eh? Oh, come, come now. You think I betray the trust of a generous and warm-hearted employer like your father? Yes, but he's not my father. I'm my father. I mean, we're both imposters. Don't you see? All I see is a young scamp who's trying to get me into trouble. Shame on you, Master Dick. Is this how you repay me for letting you finish off the preserved ginger on Boxing Day? What's that? Oh, nothing. Good, come in. In your own master, Dick. I was beginning to fear that the dereliction of duty so apparent in your behaviour last term was to manifest itself again on the first day of the new one. Uh, his luggage is in the van? Yes, sir. Play box in the truck. Then you may tell the estimable Mr. Bultitude that his precious cargo has been safely delivered. Very good, sir. Goodbye, Master Dick. I'll see you at Easter. Good day, sir. Have you got my rabbit? Hello, Bultitude. Hello, Dick. Hello, Rick. And how is your noble parent, Richard? In good health, I trust? I... Oh, the thought of leaving him deprives you of speech. That's very understandable. A man of his tender disposition is bound to inspire a deep affection in his offspring. I had a letter from him during the vacation. Yes, I know. He told you. But what he cannot have conveyed is the tone of its content. It was a beautiful letter, Richard. With concern for your welfare, breathing in every line. You look surprised. I cannot for the life of you think why. He has always followed your career at Crichton House with anxiety and solicitude, though he is by no means blind to your faults. And he has implored me, should you stray from the paths of righteousness, not to stay my hand. Now, the reason that I've called you all together is because I have a very serious proposition to make. Yes, Father? What about a game of hide-and-seek? Hide-and-seek! Oh, yes! But you're gout. Gout? Well, when Dickie asked you to play, he said you can't rush up and down stairs because of the pain in your leg. Oh, well, that was just an excuse. I don't like playing with Dick. He's too fast for me. Can Rosie play too? Yes, of course. But what about luncheon, sir? Oh, hang the luncheon. Play. Haven't we got some preserved ginger? Yes, well, let's have that then. Uh, and some orange champagne. Right, I'll be it, and I'm going to start counting now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, boys, how did you enjoy your holidays, eh? I hope that despite the distraction of Christmas, you've lost no opportunity to improve your mind, sir. Huh? I personally went up to town to witness the representation of the Agamemnon at St. George's Hall. As you are doubtless aware, the Agamemnon was a drama by Aeschylus, the Greek poet of established reputation. Was anyone else fortunate enough to see it? <coughs> I mean, the old-fashioned doctor, but I can't get a fool. Children are going to do massive exhibitions of any kind. Uh, deep, Indeed, Master George. Not as unsettling, surely, as the business with the ink pellets, for which I had to exact such painful retribution upon you last term. Ink pellets? I don't know anything about ink pellets. But to a man who prides himself upon his discipline, your influence over some of your pupils leaves a great deal to be desired. What do you mean, sir? That boy over there, he's sucking some infernal peppermint lozenge. Is this true, Cox? Yes, sir. Have you any more of these pernicious jujubes about your person? They're not jujubes, sir. I bought them as a chemist. The nature of the establishment is immaterial. You know my invariable rule concerning sweet meat, sir. I'm obliged to you, Multitude. A severe cold in the head prevented me from detecting this insidious act of insubordination and self-indulgence. Your moral courage in denouncing a fellow pupil does you proud. And not at all, Professor. Oh! Dr. Grimstone! Mr. Harvey! Mr. 
give me a severe kick on the ankle. I appeal to you for protection. So, Coca, you choose to behave like a wild ass, do you? You will write out a dozen times all you can find in Buffon's natural history concerning that animal and bring it to me by tomorrow evening. If I'm to run a stable, I must make sure that my beasts are broken in. Seems there is not a cab to be had. I made my displeasure known to the station master, who has sent for emergency transport. Meanwhile, three of you, Cogs, Coker, and Bultitude, will walk ahead of us to the school and apprise Mrs. Grimstone that we are on our way. Walk? My dear doctor, I'm not as young as I was, you know. You will do what you are told, Bultitude. Your behaviour on the train, though highly commendable, was so far out of character as to be the cause of grave suspicion. Now off you go before you fall out of my good graces. Hold our hats, Jolly. There you are, Porter. Well, holidays all over, young fellow. News of the rhinestone and all that. Having like good hard work, sir. I expect you're glad to do it. Out of sight of old Grim, are we, Coker? Yes. Good. Now see here, young boss. What's your game? Game? Not like you to play the toady. What's got into you, eh? Your brute of a governor been acting up again. Brute of a governor? You mean my father? Yes, because if it's him that's made you go off your chump, just say the word and we won't be too hard on you. On the contrary, it's a fat clock town. Then there's no excuse. What did you sneak on poor old Cogs for? And why did you sing out when Coca hacked your shin? You just let us begin to sit still, let you suck your villainous peasants under my very nose, you. Well, let the hooligan kick my leg without complaint. We don't like Smith's and Frighten House, Bultitude. You should have loved that oh, by now. you nasty! Who does us like? That's how you up for assault. <laughs> Hear that, Coco? I was up for assault, he says. That's strange. Last time we had a lot more fight in him. Let's show him how they make barley sugar. Help! Leave me alone, you uncool brownies! <laughs> oh, Coco, please! Stop the Please, sir, Ginger, for luncheon. William, an orange champagne. Poor Master Rayleigh, you look that queasy. His little face turned bright green. Oh, Master Rowley, too. Ain't that of his age in order to touch alcohol? Of course he shouldn't. I tried to make his lordship see sense, but you know what he said? He said Rowley might as well get used to it because he'd be drinking nothing else from now on. I don't like it, Cook. I don't like it at all. There's something rotten in the state of Denmark. Never mind Denmark. It's the state of Bayswater I'm worried about. If the temperance people would ever hear about We'd this... never be able to hold our heads up in decent society again. We've got to put a stop to it, Cook. Speak out, even if we lose our... Yeah. Oh, excuse me, sir. Shh, Mola. Keep your voice down. Otherwise the sheriff's men will find us. Sheriff's men? The sheriff of Nottingham. I've rescued Maid Marion from underneath his nose. He's in a frightful bait. <laughs> his men are looking for us everywhere. Well, you can't hide in my kitchen, sir. I've got work to do. And so has Maid Marion. Oh. You are a spoiled sport, cook. If you realize that if they catch Robin Hood, they'll most certainly hang him. Well, I can't help that, sir. I've got to get on. That young sheriff of Nottingham is going to need a decent meal tonight. After all that champagne he had for luncheon. Decent meal? What are we having then? Something to put the colour back into his cheeks. Steak and kidney pie with potatoes and spinach. Spinach? Oh! But you like spinach, sir. And it's good for the children, all that iron. Oh, hang iron. I don't mind a bit of pie, but we've had enough spinach to last us for years. 
I know. Let's have some more preserved ginger. Come along, Marion. They won't give us sanctuary here. We'll just have to find somewhere else to hide. Yes, about the truth. Before you retire, I really must insist, I mean, request, a private interview. Oh, you discovered another schoolmate with sweetmeats in his possession. Well, there's no need for privacy, sir. A public exposure will do far more good. For the heaven's sake, Doctor, I haven't been searching the whole school for sweetmeats. What I have to say is strictly confidential. Can we go where we will not be overheard? You have a study, I presume? Yes, Bultitude, I have a study. I also have a cane. So take care. If you insult me with any more of this brazen buffoonery, I shall be forced to convince you of both facts in a manner which you're likely to find extremely painful. Now go to your bed, sir. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. learned his lesson yet, Coker. He's still playing the sneak. Yes. He's got to be taught that he's a voucher. What about packing him in a blanket? It's too noisy. Packing him with towels would require, sir. Now yes. listen, young barbarians. I've had quite enough rough treatment for one day. I categorically refuse to let you flick me with towels. It's slippers, then. I vote we land him to him with slippers. Better gag him first. We don't want him screaming the place down. Right. Come on, you fellow. The happiest days of your life, Father. I, I, I hope you're making the most of them. 